Grab your Bibles, turn to St. John chapter number 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to read just from verses 1 through 14. St. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Everyone found it? Please say amen. amen. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Somebody say five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Look at some, somebody and say, whatsoever disease. Whatsoever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, in that condition, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise take up thy bed and walk and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the sabbath the jews therefore said unto him that was cured it is the sabbath day it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed he answered them he that made me whole the same said unto me take up thy bed and walk then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The word of the Lord is already blessed. I want you to just say prophetically, before you grab your seat, say, heaven, heaven is, waiting is waiting on me to respond. To respond. So, I need to so I need to do something. Say it one more time. Say, heaven, heaven is, waiting is waiting on me to respond. To respond. So, I so I need to do something. Look at your neighbor now and say, neighbor, your breakthrough, your breakthrough is in your obedience, in, your obedience. In, responding in responding to what God is telling you to do. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Your word is already blessed. Your, your word already has power. Your word has already gone forth. It already prospers to the thing that it's assigned to. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we decree and declare even in this atmosphere, liberty, change, miracles, healing, open doors, open heavens. We decree it, we command it in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm not going to be long before you today, <coughs> but I want to start here. Really, Bethesda, thank you, woman of God. Bethesda means house of mercy or house of flowing water. Somebody say flowing water. Flowing water. water symbolizes life. Water symbolizes life. Anytime you study water, anytime you look at water, the dynamics of water, water really symbolizes life. It's no strange reason why over 70% of the human body really is water, H2O. So Bethesda is house of mercy or house of flowing water. Water actually is one of the most powerful, powerful natural resources that we have here in the earth realm. Water, simply water. If you let water flow long enough, even amongst rock, 
even amongst minerals. If you allow water to flow long enough around land masses, the water eventually in time will find its way to where the force of the water is pushing it. And so it's important to understand Bethesda from that construct. It's also important to understand Bethesda from the fact that literally the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a modern day version of Bethesda. Amen. What am I saying? I'm saying that uh, people should come to church, uh, amen, that are, amen, impotent. People that have issues, people that have problems should find themselves in the house of God. And so what am I saying there? I'm saying simply, amen, that the church is not for uh, a bunch of perfect people. Amen. A church is not for a bunch of perfect people. Unfortunately, in this day and age, we have turned church, amen, into a gathering, amen, of liars. People that try to act like they have it all together. People that try to act like they have, amen, everything figured out. But can I tell you something? Amen. The church is where you come to get the answer. To this word, you come to meet Jesus, that you get the instruction, amen, and the knowledge and the revelation, amen, and the yoke-destroying power that you need, amen, to get yourself together, amen, amen. You don't come to church, amen, hallelujah, and try to put your shoulders up and put your head up like you're better than everybody, like you're bigger than everybody, like nothing that you, you've never been through anything. The devil is a liar. More people in here have been through hell and back than have not, amen, and so it's important for us to understand amen that the power of God gets to places where there's a need where there's a need there is a savior where there is bondage there is a deliverer where there is someone that is under a heavy yoke there is someone to break the chain and his name is Jesus somebody shout Jesus Everywhere I go, I like to let people begin to shout the name Jesus. Lest you think you're coming to a pastor to get delivered. Lest you think you're coming to a prayer warrior to get delivered. Lest you think you're coming to a prophet to get delivered. Lest you think you're coming to an apostle or a bishop to get delivered. Can I tell you something? If that apostle don't know Jesus, if that pastor don't know Jesus, if that bishop don't know Jesus, then I have some sad news for you because the power to change and the power to be delivered comes from the Lord touch somebody and say I need to touch him I said look at your neighbor and say I need a touch if I could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment then I shall be made whole if you have an issue you need to learn how to press you need to press past your issues press past the crowd press, press past your past you've got to press so where there is a yoke there is a deliverer and it's so wonderful to know that the Bible says in St. John chapter 5 that there was a great multitude. Someone say great multitude. There was a lot of folk that were impotent. They were impotent. That means that they were powerless. They were in a situation, in a condition that they could not help themselves. Sometime life hits you with things that you did not ask for. Sometimes life hits you with things that you did not do yourself necessarily. And when life hits you with those things, it puts you at a place of almost powerlessness and you feel like you're helpless and you feel like you have nobody to push you over the top and to allow you to break through so you can be successful so that you can live your life oh come on and live with peace and live with joy but can I tell you something when life hits you like that you need amen to come in contact with the life giver you need to come in contact with the person, amen, that can speak into your dead situation and say, Lazarus, you need to come forth. Who am I preaching to right there? But let me let me slow down for a little bit because the Bible categorizes the impotence. 
the Bible categorizes them. The Bible gives us three categories of impotence. There were blind, there were halt, and there were withered. And that reveals to me something. It reveals to me that the devil likes to attack three areas of your life. The devil likes to attack your vision. He likes to attack your ability to move and he likes to attack your well-being and your health. Why? How do I know that? I know that because uh, there was a category of blind folk. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. You need a vision. Come on, somebody. In other words, you need a plan. Amen. If you're trying to break through and you don't have a plan of how you're going to change your situation, if you keep doing the same things over and over again and never change your strategy what you're allowing the devil to do is to tie up your vision but look at your neighbor real quick and say neighbor in this season I'm gonna see what God wants me to see I'm not gonna see what the devil wants me to see I'm gonna see what God wants me to see because if you leave it to the devil he's gonna show you everybody that can't stand you if you leave Leave it to the devil. He's going to show you everybody that means you harm. But every now and then you got to even look at your enemies. And you got to say, I see my blessing. Every now and then you got to look at the people that are talking about you. That are criticizing you. And say, I see my blessing. You got to use your enemies as a stepping stone. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not going to try to get my enemy back. No, 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 no. I'm not going to try to get my enemy back. I'm going to use them to go to the next level. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's another level. There's another realm. And I got to get there. Heaven is waiting on me to do something. Look at your neighbor and say, what you waiting for? Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I just need about 12 Holy Ghost filled people to say this is my time to make a move. Come on, jump up on your feet and say this is my time to make a move. I wish somebody would just take three steps. Come on, take three steps and just make a move. Tell them this is my time. Hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. Real quick, find your seat now. Some of you look like you're really trying to move. But they were blind, they were halt, and they were withered. The devil wants to try to attack your sight. Your ability to look beyond your right now circumstance. He wants to attack your foresight. Because if he can keep you bound to your present condition, then he can stop you from accomplishing the destiny that God has prepared for you. And so there were blind people at the pool. There were halt people at the pool. Halt. It means there was a stop sign. There was a stop sign over certain people's life. Limbs and extremities could not move the way they needed to move could not move the way they were created to move oh God and that's what the devil wants to do he wants to take away your natural ability to move the way God made you to move he wants to stop you in your track he hates a worshiper why because worshipers are movers worshipers are people they can look at the obstacle right in the way and throw their head back open up their mouth and yokes will be destroyed are there any worshipers in here that can shout hallelujah anyhow and so there were three categories of people it was the blind it was the halt and so the bible never necessarily told us that they were halt physically it just says they were halt because it's possible for you to be stopped not just physically you can you, you can have a 
physical condition that halts you and you can have an emotional condition that halts you you can have a psychological condition that halts you oh come on somebody and so I want you to understand something that was another category of people that was stuck at the pool waiting on divine intervention then there were those categories there was a category of those that were withered it means that they were alive but they were connected to something that was allowing them to dry up that was allowing them to become oh god reduced to a lower form of what they are supposed to be withered means that they were literally wasting away they were wasting away have you ever been in a season where you have been attacked on a level where you feel like you're literally wasting away these were the category that were called withered so you had some that were blind you had some that were stopped or halted then you had some that were wasting away but they all had one thing in common they were waiting on heaven to move they were waiting on something supernatural to take place. They were waiting for an angel because the Bible declares that at a certain time, at a certain season, the angel will come down and touch the water and release supernatural power into the water. My God, I love Jesus because it sounds like a wonderful deal. It sounds like a great thing because I'm close to my miracle. I'm close to my breakthrough who am I talking to right there where you feel like you're close you feel like you're close but the closer you are it seems like the further it is the man for 38 years was in the same condition for 38 years look at your neighbor and say neighbor that's a long time that's a long time let me tell you how long it is just to be just to be uh, uh, concise here for 13,870 days the man was in the impotent state for 456 months the man was in an impotent state Oh, I, I, the Bible says 38 years I'm just converting it for you amen for 1,981 weeks the man was in the same condition he was close to a miracle but could never touch the miracle he was close to a miracle but could never obtain the miracle because his excuse was I don't have anyone to put me in there when the angel comes for 332,880 hours the man was in an impotent state for 19 million nine hundred and seventy two thousand and eight hundred minutes the man was in the same condition he was waiting for a specific time he was waiting for a specific move of God but then one day somebody shot one day after all those years after all those minutes after all those hours one day a revolutionary began to walk by one day somebody called Jesus began to walk by and Jesus looked at the man who am I preaching to in here Jesus looks at you and says you've been in that state for too long you've been in that condition for too long and he says hold on by the looks of it you've been sitting there by the miracle for a long time but it's time for you to stop sitting by the miracle and step into the miracle it's time for you to stop looking crazy stop looking like you don't want the breakthrough come on somebody you gotta stop the excuses somebody shout stop the excuses 
You got to stop the excuses. Stop talking about who won't love you. Stop talking about who left you. Stop talking about that you don't have nobody to put you in the water. You got to make up your mind. Jesus asked one question. After 19 million minutes, he asked one question. After, come on somebody, 1,988, 81 weeks, he asked one question. After 38 years, he asked one question. He said, will you be made whole? Somebody prophesied, will you be made whole what's your answer tonight what's your answer tonight heaven is waiting on you i said heaven is waiting on you shake your neighbor's hand like you're gonna shake it off i said shake your neighbor's hand like you're gonna shake it off and say heaven is waiting on you to make a move you gotta open up your mouth when he asks you a question give him an answer say yes lord yes lord yes lord yes to your will yes to your way my answer will be yes lord yes when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart with my whole heart with my whole heart i'll agree and my answer who am I prophesying here? Who am I prophesying to in here tonight? It, heaven is waiting on you. So you're saying, God, I don't have nobody. Oh God, like just like the impotent man. I don't have nobody. Nobody's there to put me in the water when the season comes but can i tell you something right here and i'm closing there's a difference between natural time and divine time there's a difference between kairos and chronos there's a difference between when you are trying to make up your own schedule and when god steps in your schedule and says i'm gonna shift things i'm gonna move things I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to turn it around. Somebody jump up one more time and just turn. Just turn. Just turn. Just turn. Each time you're turning, each time you're turning, something is happening. As you turn, there's a shift. Heaven is waiting oh come on somebody shout in this place somebody shout in this place somebody shout i said shout with all your god shout with all your might shout like you're about to lose your mind shout let the devil hear let the devil hear the sound of a worshiper yeah 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 oh ho oh, oh. ho oh. ho somebody open up your mouth shout one more time let me tell you one more thing when God asks you a question get ready for something crazy to happen when God asks you a question get ready for a miracle why he's omniscient that means he knows the answer already before he asks you the question what heaven is waiting on is a set of people that are saying I'm sick and tired of being bound I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired I'm sick and tired of my condition and I'm ready to obtain the miracle so I hear God asking somebody the question will you be made 
oh i know you come to church i know you preach I know you lead out praise and worship. I know you speak in tongues, but you're not whole. You're not whole. Some of us, we're prophesying, but we're not whole. Some of us, we're praying, but we're not whole. And God is saying, I need your mind. I need your heart. I need your body. I need your spirit. And you need to tell me, yes, one more time. Somebody shout yes. Oh, oh. Come on, find three people. Find three people and say, we're going to shift the atmosphere with a yes today. Rabatsu. Yes, Lord. Come on, find three people. Touch somebody. Stir up their gift. Stir up the anointing. And say, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I say yes every time you say yes to God that generational curse that devil has to back up that devil has to throw in the towel who am I preaching to you got power you got power you don't need the angel to come trouble the water all you need to do is rise take up your bed Somebody start walking. Somebody kashanda rebokosaya. Somebody start walking. You're walking into your destiny. You're walking into power. You're walking into another dimension. You're walking into a new stratosphere. You're walking. You're walking out of that divorce into your future. You're walking out of depression into destiny. You're walking. Somebody shout yes. Shout yes. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Now worship God like you're about to lose your mind. Somebody shout, my change is here, my opening is here, come on shout, my opening is here, I don't need heaven to open, I need to open, because God is about to release heaven right down in me, will you? Will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? A lot of times we are waiting for heaven to do miracles that God has already ordained for our faith to be able to do. He looked at the man. He said, don't tell me about the season. Don't tell me about you missing the angel troubling the water. Don't tell me about the fact that you don't have anybody to assist you in the troubling of the water, in the breakthrough that you need. You've been in the same situation for 38 years. So at some point, you have to change the equation because obviously you're in the right place at the right time but you're still not getting a breakthrough because the breakthrough starts with your decision to be made whole that's where the breakthrough starts that's where the breakthrough starts. my assignment tonight is done but I'm gonna give you the opportunity before I turn over to the apostle.